box, that gearbox. So hello, you've caught me in the middle of an overtake. I conveniently find myself on some tight, twisty Austrian Alpine roads. We're already in sport mode. Let's not beat around the bush, get straight to the point. And there it is. Oh, all 900 Newton meters of torque. Basically, it's 630 horsepower, this car. By God, do you know it? Now claimed not to 60 figures are three 0.6 seconds. Boom, 60. Let me tell you something. Conservative doesn't quite do that justice. This thing hauls ass. <laughs> I mean, I am gaining elevation up this Alpine Pass like I have a rocket up my backside. Wow. And the brakes. I actually need to reconfigure this take so that I don't get carried away and bombard you with irrelevantly connected information. And today, we find ourselves in the all new six liter W12 Continental GT in the Austrian Alps. And I can tell you firsthand with my thesaurus of vocabulary, just how delightful it is to be in a W12 with over 600 horsepower, 900 newton meters of torque, and check this, an eight speed twin clutch gearbox, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you why I'm so happy. If you watch this channel regularly, you'll know that I class myself as somewhat of a gearbox snob. Let me clarify what I mean by that. In this sort of world of performance cars, and despite the fact this being a Super GT, it is very much a performance car, as I hope you sort of gathered back there when I was dispatching some cars on Yonder Alp, the performance and feel and connectivity difference you get with a twin clutch gearbox between your more conventional automatic gearbox for me personally is night and day it's all because of when you pull these paddles it does what you want it to do when you want to do it with just slamming it home refinement and of course that's the key with this car the idea is that it is the ultimate grand tourer and granted i've done probably about 50 miles in this car from my hotel to get to these alps so far and it has wafted along it's just an incredible experience to sit on a bed of torque and have your derriere transported through this environment but the thing is and this is where things have really evolved with bentley is that they are now working directly in conjunction with Porsche. Now, this seems to be happening a lot in the automotive space with brands teaming up with other brands who are, let's face it, better at certain things than Bentley might have otherwise historically been. For me, Bentley have always nailed the whole phenomenal interior, craftsmanship, artisan design, just gorgeous gentleman's express, as it were. And let's face it, Porsche have always been the kings of dynamics. And one of, if not the best gearboxes in the world is Porsche's twin clutch, the PDK. Now, they've also upped the game and made this an eight speed PDK. The significance of it is to develop a PDK that can reliably deal with this much torque is a feat of engineering in itself. So if you think about other cars in this realm, take the uh, DB11 for example, it's not rocking anywhere near the same sophistication drivetrain as this. Don't forget as well, it is mated to a very clever four wheel drive system which gives it huge traction. But to have this gearbox, I'm so happy. And how is it, you ask? Well, let's just put it back into sport because let's face it, that's what everybody wants to know about. change change and it is a seamless audible tone change of gear shift it just glides through them the thing is though because you're the one interacting with it you know exactly that it's hit the mark at exactly the right point and that for me is the whole point of a twin clutch or a pdk or whatever variation you wish to refer to it as it's all about accuracy and when you hit that paddle it's nailing it just when you want it thank you bentley big tick in my book okay so i've just reached a more mainstream section of road on my way to find alpine euphoria 
So before we reach there, let's talk about the more chilled out settings of this car because ultimately, while it is very capable of going incredibly swift around some very tight corners, um, most of the time, the chances are you're gonna be using this as the Grand Tour. You're gonna be absolutely destroying miles in class and comfort. So let's talk about the engineering decorum which has been integrated within the new Bentley Continental GT, starting with comfort mode and the all new three cylinder air suspension. When I say this car feels like it's riding on a bed of air, it's because it's riding on a bed of air. Um, so the Continental GT has all new air suspension. The significance of the new three cylinder suspension is that it has allowed for 60% more volume within the air chambers to really give you that sense of frictionless glide across the surface of the road. After 250 meters, leave the roundabout at the second exit and continue to follow the B168 towards Langdorf. Please take the second exit. Elizabeth is very specific with her directions. Anyway, you might be forgiven for thinking that, well, if this thing's riding on a bed of air, how is it that it can also be so dynamically capable? Well, the miracle of modern day engineering has applied a 48 volt active roll control system to this car. 48 volts is significant because it's got to keep this mass in check laterally. And as a result, it's laterally dynamic, vertically comfortable. Meaning when it rides over the road, it's very guys overtaking on a bend. That's literally a blind corner. As with the previous Continental GT, this has the largest brakes on a production car in the world. I guess that's a good and a bad thing because at the minute, this car is only available with steel rotors. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever picked up a set of conventionally sized steel rotors. They are heavy bits of metal. On the flip side, there's a vast amount of surface area of which to apply some friction to stop this over two ton car when it's pulling this kind of power. But I guess I dread to think what the unsprung mass is like on the front of this car. The size of the rotors is 380 millimeters at the rear, which is bigger than most front brakes on most cars, and 420 millimeters at the front. You could stop a freight train with that. That's it, that's insane. Okay, we have entered the Gletscherstrabe, which is Austrian for awesome road. Let's find out what this thing's like in sport mode. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Relentless power. Now, I'm not sure if the camera's picking up on this, but on the downshifts in sport, there is a subtle... Wow pop and bang on the overrun. It's only a mild barble, but it's there. It's just nice to remind you that you're in something a little bit spicy when you're in the right gear. <laughs> yeah, it's very, <laughs> it's very cool. Let's see what the steering rack is like. Now look, I can go around with my arms crossed. Very steep, very steep. That poor cyclist has no idea what he's into. Caravans. Caravan. What the hell would you want to bring one of those up here for? Got a dynamic as a sloth with a ball and chain around its neck. Come on, mate. That's why you need one of these to dispatch things like that. Anyway. I guess Bentley had a pretty tricky situation on its hands, really, because ultimately, for all of this thing's sporting prowess, this is approached as a luxury Grand Tora first. That, it absolutely nails. The interior on this, 2.8 kilometers of stitching on the Molina specification, which this is. I mean, you step into it, uh, it's unlike anything else. I think right now in the luxury GT segment, this has got to be, I mean, it's up there with the best, certainly, if not one of the best interiors that I've sat in in a very long time. It's absolutely outstanding. And the way that they have created this wraparound section for both passenger and driver, 
you see this chrome beading which is on this particular spec that runs left and right of the car or essentially wraps around the whole car and it has this wonderful effect of cocooning both passenger and driver in their own distinguished zones and in terms of the touch and feel of everything because there's one thing the interior looking quality it's a whole different ball game in actually feeling quality everything you interact with you'll notice that all of the buttons anything that your hand might touch is knurled it has lots of texture and defined shapes and ridges that when you interact with it you know you're interacting with something with thought and purpose behind it for example there's something here that you can't even see on the door handle here when you put your hands behind the handle so literally something you're never going to see the knurled effect and feeling that carries on through the design of the car is featured behind the door handle so when your hand touches it you sort of uh, encounter this lovely reassuring texture which is something you just wouldn't expect so the details are truly carried through and through but where this sort of is a conundrum for Bentley is blurring the lines between you know comfy cross-continental cruiser and something that you can grab by the scruff of its neck on occasion like this and really thread it around a wonderful mountain pass but if this is your daily driver you just knock it into sport and this thing comes alive you've got to remember at the other end of this paddle that downshift paddle is a w12 I can't tell you what engineering has taken place in order for that to connect with this shift so quickly and effortlessly. The result is the car is blurring these lines. It really is now this two-in-one package. Now, ultimately, when you throw it into these really tight, twisty turns, you do feel the weight. Physics is physics, but the conundrum that Bentley have had is getting the balance between a soft ride when you want it, a relatively stiffer ride when you need it, chassis torsional rigidity, how far back or forward the engine is mounted, how stiff the dampening of the car is, or even how stiff the brackets that the engine is mounted on is. And with this car, you know, you can't really ask for much more. Ultimately, it is a fairly heavy Grand Tourer. But while I'm up here, it's serving its purpose wonderfully. Let's talk about the stuff that you might not like about the car. There's not many, I'll have to tell you, there's not that many. I guess while this car does have four seats, it is ultimately to be approached as a two plus two. So anyone in the front is having the time of their lives. In the back, I wouldn't say you would want to join the people in the front for a cross-continental cruise. But you'd be more than happy if you wanted to hop in the back and all four of you were to nip down to the pub. It's ample, but not something you'd want to be in for a long period of time. Brakes. You're aware that you're shedding off a lot of speed from a very heavy car. And there's no carbon ceramic available yet. And while these aren't doing a bad job by any means, it very much depends on how you're gonna drive this car. Let's face it, you're not gonna find yourself on a road this fantastic every day of the week. If you are, no doubt there'll be the option of carbon ceramics one day on maybe the V8, which is inevitably coming, or potentially the Super Sports version, which based on this platform, one day will be ridiculous. Right now, these big steel rotors are substantial and they do the job but I am picking up on a little bit of sponge here and there. So earlier on I was referring to this new three air chamber technology on the suspension to help fluctuate between really comfortable and in sport mode still very comfortable but overall more taut. How it works on the drive select mode down here you can rotate it between comfort Bentley mode and sport. There is actually the fourth option of custom where you'll be able to configure things like having the uh, gear shift speed in sport mode and uh, ride and handling in comfort, for example. So as you rotate from comfort on your right to Bentley mode and sport on your left, each one of these cylinders gets shut off, tightening up the suspension. So we're in comfort now, which really is like gliding around this tight hairpin. It's you know, it's still fairly well balanced, but you can tell it has its softer edge. Then you put it into Bentley mode. 
So this B for Bentley is, I guess, what you would classify as the halfway house. It's the happy medium be between comfortable and dynamic. And it's the mode which has been calibrated that the Bentley engineers think suits this car best. But then when you're on a road like this, knock it one more over to the left, everything gets a little bit more towards those valves lock off and you've got definitely, definitely a sportier ride. <laughs> Oh, it's mega. I mean, I'd kind of just keep it in sport. It's great. And that's pretty much it for my time with the new Continental GT. I've got to tell you, all in all, this is exactly the kind of thing that I would absolutely love to just waft on down to the south of France in. It is one of the most ultimate mile munchers I've ever had the pleasure of driving. Massive round of applause for the twin clutch gearbox. But also, I just think the way that these guys have really upped the game with the quality of the interior and the sense of occasion you get from simply sitting inside it just makes this exactly what a Grand Tour should be. An absolute delight to be in. As always guys, thanks for watching and I shall see you next time. Ciao.